My oh my, what a mess this is. So today I was on social media and I saw this slide and I'm like, holy crap, Intel is dead. Uh, th this next year, they're, they're dead. Uh, but before we get in and talk about this, guys, if you have any sort of interest in like the consumer side of hardware, if you really like hearing about the market analysis of computer hardware, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, that's kind of the platform that I'm trying to build here. Uh, and you know, I'm just trying to build this thing as much as possible. And I really love making content for you guys. Uh, and if you guys have any like video suggestions and stuff like that, I'm really open to that kind of stuff in the comment section and in the discord. And if you guys enjoy the video, please leave a like again. It really helps me out as a content creator. You know, we're, we're pretty small. We hit 500 subs a little while ago. Uh, and I would love to hit a thousand subscribers here uh, by the end of the year. So thank you guys for clicking on the video and let's get into it. So Intel recently put out some slides about their new Cypress Cove CPUs and I was just like, holy crap, this is terrible. So let me get up to draw here. So first off, I just want to talk about the, the main parts of the CPU. So they're only doing eight cores and 16 threads, right? So th this, is, this is the biggest CPU that they're going to make to. It's up to eight cores. Whereas on the last generation with the 10900K, we had 10 cores and 20 threads, which is, again, if you guys can't do basic math, that's a decrease in our core count. So uh, there, there's something going wrong here, uh, either in terms of they're thermally limited in this uh, you know, still 14 nanometer architecture. Yeah, guys, this is this is still a 14 n m. Uh, yeah, so this is a, I'm, I'm really bad at drawing with a mouse, uh, but yeah, they're still on 14 nanometers, guys, and they've been on this for like seven years. So I think they're starting to get to the point where it is thermally limiting them for the amount of cores that they can put on. Uh, but I guess one of the good things that we saw here is that they had an increase in IPC, so they said double digits. Now what I'm getting from double digits is it's going to be like on the low end of like the teens, so I'm, it's going to be around like 10 to 11% increase. Um, and the reason why I say that is, is because if they didn't explicitly state the number, it usually means that they really don't want to disclose it because it's not as good as some people uh, would like it to be. Uh, I'm sure if they had a 20% increase, uh, they can market that against AMD because AMD only has a 19% increase in IPC. Uh, and so why wouldn't they market that? Uh, so double digit kind of means that they're going to be sub what AMD has for this launch, which again is that 19% uh, increase. So yeah, we're probably not going to see them combating AMD here uh, in the single thread and multi-thread performance of this generation. Now something that I, I genuinely laughed at was the increased memory speeds up to DDR4-3200. So this is, a, this is in reference to their memory controller on their CPU. Now I don't really know the whole architecture kind of stuff with uh, Intel. Intel's CPU memory controllers, you know, I would like to know more, um, but from what I know is like on their on their last gen uh, CPUs, they support up to, you know, pretty high memory speeds on their Z series motherboards, uh, but I, I, what the really bad thing was with last gen was on anything that wasn't a Z series motherboard, and it was restricted by the motherboard, the CPU was not restricted from this, um, is that you couldn't have memory timings above 2933. So even if you had a 3200 megahertz kit, you cannot clock your memory past 2933. It was a hard limit for your memory, which was terrible for a lot of people. So it looks like they're finally supporting up to 3200 megahertz on their memory by default is what I'm assuming from this. Uh, so, you know, good good for you Intel. AMD's been supporting 3200 megahertz uh, for, for a long time. Now, the next thing they've got a PCIe Gen 4 CPU finally oh that was a terrible drawing so they've got PCIe Gen 4 on their CPUs basically you know something that we've already seen here with AMD now I'm not gonna get on them too hard about this because really PCIe Gen 4 hasn't really been adopted uh, in many programs I mean maybe in like file transfers between uh, high-speed SSDs uh, but in terms of like graphics cards and stuff like that, we really have not seen a bottleneck in PCIe 3 versus PCIe uh, Gen 4. So in terms of that, you know, it's a good feature for them to have. They also increased the CPU PCIe lanes. Uh, which is something that they kind of needed to do for PCIe Gen 4 so that you had enough for the SSD and the graphics card. So you had 16 for the graphics card and then you got 4 for the SSD. So that's just kind of how it's working. And then this whole segment over here is just kind of talking about the XE graphics. Uh, nothing really amazing here. It's just like, uh, it's, 
eh, I mean, like, it's it's cool that they've gotten new video encoders and stuff like that, but most people just kind of relegate that to, to their dedicated graphics card, especially if you have something like an NVIDIA graphics card with the NVENC encoder, usually uh, your GPU is kind of handling most of that stuff that's going on with uh, media encoding and stuff like that. So that just tells you how bad the next generation is going to be. As well, from what I heard, instead of just continuing on the 400 series chipset like they have right now, they're going on to the 500 series. So that basically means that anybody who has a 10th gen uh, CPU is uh, it's kind of dead right now because those run on the 400 series motherboards. Uh, so the 500 series is going to be the new standard. Uh, and 400 is basically just going to be there for a generation. Or they might just change 400 series to be compatible with 500 series. I'm not 100% sure what the pen layout is going to be, if it's going to be any different on these CPUs. Because uh, if it is, again, those 400 series motherboards are going to be killed off. Uh, but yeah, it also really sucks for anyone who buy a 10th gen CPU. So I know a lot of you guys are probably going to be saying, well, why are you playing a micro center for a market analysis? Uh, I mean, these guys really aren't that widely available to most people in the world, and that is true. Uh, but what I've found to be a trend with Micro Center is they really do slash prices on things that don't sell. So usually on like older gen CPUs, so I bought my Ryzen 5 1600 for $50. Uh, so that was just because, you know, Zen, uh, Zen Plus, I think, was out and Zen 3 was just about to come out. Uh, so when I bought my CPU, it was like, you know what, 50 bucks for a brand new 6 core 12 thread CPU was pretty good and I just threw that in my system and I still run it today and it works great. And the reason why it was $50 really wasn't because it was a bad CPU, it was because they just weren't selling them. People wanted to buy the newer stuff so they usually just discount the old crap like crazy. And so when I was looking on Micro Center today, I'm like, holy crap, they are slashing prices today. So the i7-9700K initially released at a price of $500 hundred dollars now it's at less than half of that uh, about two years into its life cycle now this is a trend that we've never really seen with Intel and that's really just because they don't like to discount their prices and well they really didn't have to because AMD wasn't around back then or they just weren't competitive but right now Intel's kind of getting smacked in the butt uh, by AMD so now they're really gonna have to start cutting prices and micro centers cutting prices because they're not selling anything at Intel I have not seen this CPU in particular the 3600 I haven't seen this thing discounted once since initial release the $200 uh, starting price is you know that's what they listed it for but Micro Center is always kind of in that thing with the with deals so right when it came out they marked it down 20 bucks and that just kind of gives them a little leeway uh, in case they run out of stock of it so they can just raise it back up to $200 without you know kind of declaring a price hike uh, it's a good strategy but $180 is a really good deal for the CPU and I have never seen this price fluctuate on this site because they are selling enough of these CPUs to where that price is making them a lot of money and they're moving inventory and this Intel trend isn't just something that is relegated to the 9700k it's also to the 9900k which started out as probably around $650 or $700 when it first came out now it's $320 a good bit less than half the price uh, same thing with this one I mean this one just came out here in a little bit this is the 10700k it's $350 uh, I think one of the best ones here to indicate what the market's looking like, this one's $160, and this one's at like kind of the same performance tier as this CPU, even though it has like integrated graphics and all that stuff, it still isn't even competing with this CPU just because it's Intel. Nobody wants Intel right now. And this isn't just a thing at Micro Center. I mean, all of these CPUs prices are getting slashed. Like, I mean, this CPU on Amazon, it's getting slashed down. The 9700K on Amazon is still getting slashed down. Amazon's a really big retailer, guys. Amazon's probably one of the last ones to cut prices because they're just selling so much of whatever they have on stock. And even them cutting down the 9700K's prices to $288 kind of signifies that people just are not buying Intel. So what does this mean for Cypress Cove? Well, I really don't think that it's going to do too well in next year's market, especially when, you know, it's planned to release. AMD's next generation of Zen 3 CPUs are already going to be out, and I think that this platform is kind of going to be dead on arrival like the last gen was. So where do I think that they're going to go for the market? 
it's going to be for value. I think Intel is going to be the value king here for the next couple of years until they can get their crap together and actually develop something on a somewhat recent process and make a good CPU that can compete with the likes of AMD's Ryzen lineup. And honestly, this would be something interesting to see. Now again, we're not going to be going for performance kings here. But if we can get an 8 core 16 thread CPU at launch uh, with PCIe Gen 4, and this isn't just going to be like last gen, uh, the, their last generation of CPUs didn't have an IPC increase. They just increased core counts, clocks, and threats, which is okay. Uh, but again, IPC is really where you're going to get a lot of your performance from generation to generation, and we didn't have an IPC increase from last gen. So it's kind of getting to the point where, well, the only thing that they have to sell is going to be budget parts. It's going to be able to compete with AMD's low end, but Intel's not going to be seen anywhere against AMD's high end. So this is kind of uh, this is kind of a kick to the entire market, uh, and really this is just going to be a message to Intel out there, like, okay, I am fine with you guys being the budget guys for maybe one to two years, but you guys need to kick things into gear sometime soon like you guys need to start developing stuff now you guys need to get your seven nanometer process done now and you guys need to fix all of your manufacturing faults like we can't have supply shortages like we've had uh and, and if you guys want to compete with amd you guys need to actually step it up uh and i'm kind of afraid of amd being the sole leader in cpus and we have another reign of just a single dominant cpu brand uh, like we did with Intel for so long and we were on four cores for forever uh, You know, we just had a taste of competition uh, And it kind of kind of sucks for it to go to go to go wrong, you know, so thank you guys for watching uh, Please if you guys like the video uh, hit that like button uh, and Subscribe if you guys want to see more content See ya